Known for its rich agricultural history, the Klamath Basin is located in the high desert region of Southern Oregon and Northern California. Potatoes have been an important crop in this area for decades. But with uncertainty in the commodity market, a group of growers decided to form Klamath Basin Fresh Direct, cultivating unique organic potato varieties to sell throughout the West Coast. We were really in a commodity mode as far as uh, potatoes go because potato commodity prices were uh, variable, real variable, mainly low, mainly, mainly below the cost of production so it was tough to make a living. We lost a lot of potato growers through those transition periods. We put together this group and it's a co-op of growers. But the whole idea was that we could, uh, we could create a special product and instead of trying to do it one farm or another farm and compete with each other, um, if we joined and did it together, we could probably produce more, produce better, and, uh, and hopefully market uh, better to the consumer. Probably the biggest change is, is we, this area had always grown russet potatoes, and that was the mainstay, and then it kind of evolved into chipping potatoes. And so we looked at some um, English potatoes, or a little white potato, that started it. And from there, it's grown to some fingerlings and some red potatoes and yellows. And we're just trying to look at new varieties. We actually have a purple potato that we're working with as well. This new co-op of growers didn't start off organic. But given the local climate, short growing season, and limited pest pressures, they soon found organic production to be their niche. A conventional potato versus an organic potato crop is, uh, is really two different worlds. A, a conventional crop, you can rely on chemicals and fertilizers to kind of get you through problematic situations. With this, you kind of have to allow the, the plant to, to do it. So it usually takes a lot more uh, forward thinking of how to produce um, and limit those factors that we have to deal with uh, the best we can. So instead of planting it the same way we plant a conventional field, maybe we try to plant shallow or we, we try to uh, keep the water off longer so likewise we also use uh, different rotations whereas a conventional crop, crop we may do just like four rotations of wheat and then potatoes here we're trying to use uh, walking wetlands or water and then a wheat crop and then potatoes to try to deal with a lot of those diseases that you know we don't have to worry about in a conventional crop so it's quite a bit different it's a lot more expensive to, to, to rotate ground that way and to farm that way but um, we feel it's, it's also a, a, a good benefit. The Staunton's potato crop is being rotated on large portions of the Klamath Basin National Wildlife Refuge. This section will be drained and planted with wheat or barley next year, then potatoes the year after that. The field will be flooded again, and the annual rotation continues. This project between farmers and the refuge is called walking wetlands. In cultivating these wetlands, Farmers have seen higher yields, while migrating waterfowl are finding improved habitat. We like it for the agricultural benefits, but you know the refuge that works as our partner, they love it for the wildlife benefits. So it's kind of a win-win. You know, instead of the wildlife and the ag fighting each other, we've kind of pulled it together, and and it seems like it's really working well because you know over the environmental laws, it's it's kind of been a pushback between the ag side and the, and the government side, but this, this, is a, this is a great example of cooperation, these walking wetlands. When summer is over and the potato plant dies back, the farmers prepare for harvest. It's the time you go out and, you know, seek your reward. I mean, all of us like treasure, and that's what's cool about potatoes is they're buried under the ground. Yeah, harvest time is unexplainable. We get to see what we've put in it's taken us several years to get to this one crop that we're pulling out of the ground. We've been planning for this, this crop here for you know, two to three years prior with different fertility and different crop rotations to get, get to this point. And then this whole summer we've, we've uh, been out here in this field every day watching this crop of potatoes. When we get to see them go in the truck and, and, and 
be put away in the storage. It, it, it's pretty amazing. It takes a lot of people and a lot of activity and a lot of coordination and it's just a lot of fun. Potatoes are harvested by huge machines that lift the dirt and dig the potatoes right out of the ground. Depending on the machine, the potatoes are collected two to four rows at a time. With each pass, a load is set into a large dump truck. After a short trip back to the packing shed, the potatoes are unloaded. Workers start by picking out large pieces of dirt and other plant matter. The potatoes are carried to a washing machine, then through another machine that analyzes the product for defects. Potatoes that don't make the grade are removed. The potatoes are then inspected by hand. After being separated by size, the potatoes are ready to be shipped. Some in boxes, others in large totes. Potatoes that aren't packed and shipped right away are stored in a cellar. Here the potatoes can be stored for several months and are shipped off as orders come in. Every night we always finish harvest and we um, all go to the potato cellar where we're, where we're moving all this crop to for the winter. And um, it's always a really rewarding time when you walk in the cellar and you see the the, the pile building and moving forward in the cellar and you're always, you know, it, you get the smell and it's, it's a, a couple minutes there where it's like, oh, that was a good day. Working for two to three years to get this one crop of potatoes and the end result, I guess that's why I do it. You know, I was uh, raised here and uh, farming was an easy decision for me because I was used to it and I plan on doing it for the rest of my life. It's, it's so rewarding just you know, just like standing here in a view like this, you know, people travel to see this. We see it every day and, you know, we see all the wildlife and, you know, it, there's a high risk game, but yet there's a lot of reward too. Every year, every crop we put out, we deal with Mother Nature. You know, whatever she gives us, that's what we have to work with. We use the same soils, but Every year is different because it's either wet or cold or rainy or sunny or hot or, you know, so there's always those variables. So it's never the same from year to year. So that's probably the challenge of farming is, you know, you can apply practices, but you always have to adjust in, in the things you do to a certain extent. So it's kind of a hands-on experiment all the time to, to raise your crops to to meet your customers needs and you know those kind of things so I, I think it's it's just a passion that that I've always had and and I like to do for more information visit kbfd.org